Hey folks, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com, and a topic I want to talk about today is red meat. Uh, red meat has uh, often been viewed throughout, actually, long history, thousands of years, as an inherently uh, superior source of protein for physical strength, for performance, for muscle mass. Uh, now, of course, you know whether that's true or not is something we're going to look into briefly. Uh, but before we get to that, first let's talk about the issue of health. Uh, before we get into that, I, I want to link an article that covers the debate whether red meat uh, is healthy or unhealthy or leads to higher rates of certain disease because certain people watching this may say, well, okay, red meat might be good for X, but it's associated with higher rates of uh, heart disease or cancer. And so this article covers that in depth. Uh, I'm not going to go into it here. What I will say is for a lot of people, what you think you know about red meat uh, may not be correct. And you can go read this article and fill yourself in. Now, if from that article you decide that you know you would include red meat in your diet or not is really up to you. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, but I don't want to make that a focus of this video, so I want to get that out of the way. Two, when we talk about red meat, inclusion of red meat into a diet, we are talking about, of course, a balanced approach to nutrition. We are not talking about high meat intakes minus uh, uh, plenty of vegetables and fruits and, and so on and so on and fiber and all that. So whenever you're talking about red meat in a diet, any meat really of course, but you're still talking about balanced nutrition. If you don't have balanced nutrition, it, it's a, it's a non-starter. So those things need to be kept in mind so somebody doesn't leave comments about, oh, health effects or will, you know, uh, you shouldn't eat extra meat in, in, uh, in, instead of vegetables or whatever. Okay, so let's just move on with that. Uh, as far as my opinion personally on, on vegetarian eating, I do cover that in another, in another video, which I'll link uh, right here. You can listen to that, again, decide for yourself. I try to take a very neutral, uh, objective, science-based view on these things. So, let's get back to red meat. Uh, you know, whether red meat is inherently um, more anabolic or anti-catabolic than other protein sources has never really been uh, well studied uh, in the data. There are, some, there are some studies that are suggestive that red meat may be superior, but they're really not uh, close to smoking gun. They're not, they're not that solid, they're not that strong. There was a study done in older men comparing uh, omnivores, meat eaters, to lacto-ovo vegetarians, and the men getting the meat uh, did gain a bit more muscle. But again, it was not a very big study, uh, and it really isn't as far, as far from conclusive, to be honest with you. So I'm not going to rest this discussion on studies, which I usually do. Uh, I'm actually going to do something that I rarely do, which is actually talk, uh, let's say, real world experience. Now, I have worked with uh, IFBB pro level bodybuilders, I worked with Olympic level track athletes, and so on and so on. And when I had a training business, I, I put hundreds of people through diets. And so I had a pretty good uh, 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 track record of, of following these people's diets and stuff. And I will tell you that in my experience, uh, red meat, for whatever reason, has always been. Um, seemingly a bit more anabolic or and or more anti-catabolic. And what do I mean by that? Well, for example, some athletes I worked with uh, were quote-unquote clean eaters. And back in the day, I mean, all they ate was like chicken and fish and rice and broccoli and stuff. And a lot of times, and these were pretty high-level athletes, were not making progress in their strength and their muscle mass. And I would suggest the inclusion of some red meat. Now, the only thing that would change in their diet, you know, no change in uh, total grams of protein, uh, no change in calories up was the inclusion of red meat. And every time I did that, they would have new progress in their muscle mass and their strength and what have you. Conversely, on the anti-catabolic comment, uh, again, a lot of um, bodybuilders, uh, fitness athletes, what have you, dieting, you know, would take red meat out of their diet, and I would always recommend they keep it in. And again, we're talking about lean red meat. We're not talking about, you know, 80% hamburger, you know, with fat boiling over. We're not talking about fatty cuts of meat. We're talking about lean red meat here. So when I had them keep the red meat in their diet and or sometimes they just hadn't had it in years, again, routinely I would find that they would retain more muscle mass during their diets than they had on previous diets. Now remember, this is anecdotal, this is subjective, this is not data. So there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, we're, not, we're talking as hypothesis and hypothesis is fine. It's how we move forward, it's how we do studies. The issue I always have when I get on people's case for bro science or whatever is presenting that as science or presenting that as fact. So, you know, I'm telling you right up front, this is a subjective thing. So what about red meat should make it inherently more uh, anabolic or anti-catabolic and other sources of protein? And I'll be honest with you, that's something of a mystery. Uh, when you look at the protein quality of red meat, that is uh, through a standard protein uh, scoring 
uh, for BV or NPU or PER and stuff, there's nothing special about it. it. It ranks, you know, on the higher end, but it's not the highest by far in any of these rankings. So that's not, clearly not the reason. There are a lot of uh, compounds in red meat, however, that may, you know, may be part of the reason. I mean, there's, of course, there's the well-known, uh, more biologically available uh, iron, heme iron. There's more biologically active uh, form of B12. But there's also fairly high levels of creatine and carnosine. Um, and various B vitamins and CL, some CLA if the, if the animals are fed more towards grass fed and a number of things, uh, creatine if I didn't already mention that. There's a number of compounds in red meat that on paper may lend themselves to improved uh, strength and muscle mass or retention of muscle mass during dieting. But honestly I'm not really sure if any of them really explain it because they're not really in terribly high doses. Uh, it could be some synergism between them. It could be something we don't even know yet. I I'm really not sure. And again, uh, we do need more data. Uh, I think a very interesting study would, of course, be to, to take groups, two groups of people and have them eat um, everything but red meat, you know, chicken, fish, eggs, what have you, and have the other group include, uh, you know, say one serving per day of red meat, maybe eight ounces, 60 ounces of lean meat, uh, and either put them on a diet or put them on, on a resistance training and see if there are differences. But that data really doesn't exist, and I hope if any of my scientist friends are watching this, uh, if it inspires them to go do a study, I hope you'll put me in there as co-author, you know, I hook a brother up. But uh, so that's, that's the bottom line. There's really not a lot of really conclusive data. I will say that my personal experience is for whatever reason I have always found red meat to be, uh, it seems to be more anabolic and or anti-catabolic a, a source of protein and I honestly cannot ex fully explain to you why that is. Again, we need more data. So I hope that helps. Uh, again, don't complain about uh, the health issues of red meat or whatever. Uh, go read the article and decide for yourself you know, where that really stands on the data and then move from there. And of course, if you're a vegetarian, lacto ovo vegetarian, well, then this is not the video for you. So I hope this helps. Uh, please sub up. As you can see, uh, my channel tends to have a bit more objective science-based information, even if this was not one of them per se. And I'll see you all on the ring side.